Today we're going to talk about passive house windows. We've looked at the opaque elements of the passive house envelope and the next thing we want to look at are the windows because windows are a very important part of the passive house. They not only help to keep energy in that passive house but they also are responsible for bringing in that free solar gain. About one third of our energy needs in the passive house come free from the sun and so therefore we want to try and optimize the orientation as best we can. In this project behind us here we have plenty of, of uh, well orientated glass which can harvest that free energy during the winter time when we need it most. Given all the functions that the window plays in the passive house it won't surprise you to learn that it's the most expensive element of the thermal envelope and given that it's very important that you put a lot of time and effort into considering what windows you want to use. You need to think about the U-value of the glass, the U-value of the frame, the thermal bridge value of the spacer, the G-value which is the solar transmittance. So there's a lot of things to think about. You need to think about the look of them as well. If you want them aluminium clad, if you want them softwood on the inside or PVC or whatever. So there's a lot of choices to make. Let's have a closer look now at the technology behind the Passive House windows uh, because there are some very uh, special details on the Passive House window that are not found uh, for your standard window. So let's have a look at those in, in quite detail now. Um, the first thing to mention is that the Passive House windows are typically triple glazed. So our conventional windows are double glazed and these window sections have three panes of glass. The next thing to look at are the two metal spacers here. Uh, in a normal window you've got aluminium spacers there and they conduct an awful lot of heat out of your house but in the passive house window we have very low conductivity spacers. And the last thing to mention on this particular detail here in terms of its thermal performance is this little block of insulation here. It might look quite insignificant but that actually helps to reduce the heat loss out through the timber frame. So the overall U value of this window once it's fitted is around 0.85 watts per meter squared Kelvin and that's um, a tremendous advancement on your typical standard double glaze unit. Every house, even a passive house, needs a front door and typically uh, in the main door of the passive house would be a solid wooden door like this um, and again just like the windows the thermal performance of this door has to be very very good they typically have a U value of around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 watts per meter squared Kelvin. There are special testing requirements for certified passive house doors. They're tested uh, to be extremely airtight as well because they're part of the airtightness um, membrane, if you like. Um, they also have to be quite rigid and sturdy, and you have to appreciate to get the U value there of 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 watts per meter square kelvin there's a lot of insulation packed in there as well so it's not a simple panel of wood but they have these layers of insulation in between the inside face and the outside face let's have a look now at the window fitting detail because that's very important uh, in in building passive houses uh, first of all looking at the structure here um, we have it we're in a timber frame house which has 90 millimeters of Gutex insulation on the outside. We have a 240 I-beam stud here, um, and inside this again, we're going to have another 90 mil service cavity. So all told, we've got 440 millimeters of insulation. You might be curious about this little uh, nib here, this 40 mil nib of insulation here, and that's a very special detail for the passive house because um, we're about to fit the window here now in a few moments and it's very important that the window frame is wrapped with insulation on the outside and the main purpose of that is to reduce the heat loss out through the timber frame. So here's our window and let's do a simulation now of how this window frame is fitted. As I mentioned what we want to try and do is get some insulation on the exterior of this frame to try and reduce the heat loss. So the window frame is offered up like this. The barrier here will be later taped in terms of air tightness. And now you can see here, we have 40 mil cover on the frame. And you have to imagine now, the amount of heat loss through this frame is greatly reduced as a result of this detail. 
So let's have a look at the window itself now before we fit it in the op that we just looked at. Um, there's a few things about the window that's worth pointing out. First of all, uh, windows are quite expensive as you can imagine and uh, you're going to be looking at them for years and years so you want to make sure that the finish is well protected and you can see here they're normally wrapped in some sort of protective film and also they have this uh, insulation like material here to stop any dents or, or abrasions on the site. So that's in terms of keeping it clean and, and keeping it safe. We know air tightness is very important in the passive house and it's very important that all the opening sections, all the opening windows and doors are also airtight. So in this case we can see here there are two gaskets, two rubber gaskets here and uh, normally on a typical window you might have only one. So on these passive house windows there's generally two and they help to keep uh, the air out, uh, the cold air out of the house and to achieve that very demanding passive house standard. A few minutes ago we saw this window uh, being fitted in and it was very impressive how snug the fit was. You can see there uh, there's very very uh, tight tolerances in terms of measurements so that's really really quite perfect. And now the window is in place. We know the frame outside here is wrapped by about 40 millimeters of insulation and we can see here, uh, get an impression here of how the air tightness is going to be created. We will have a barrier here which will overlap that. So we've learned a good lot here about how to fit uh, this window in a timber frame situation. You can imagine uh, that if you're building a masonry house or insulated concrete formwork or whatever, that the window fitting uh, detail might be slightly different. And that's something that we began to realize here in Ireland now that different construction types demand different window fitting details. And we're going to show you some of those different fitting details in this series as well. Tightness in buildings is critical but particularly in passive house design and one of the areas where air leakage often occurs is around window junctions to the structural walls. In this project the plan is to seal the air tightness layer to the window frame so the proposal in this case as we can see here is to seal the passive house window back to the air tightness layer which is the OSB which in this case has been lined with a vapour control layer locally at the window junction. In this particular project, the plan is to use this tape, Tescon Profil, a Pro Climate tape, which has a serrated backing paper, which allows the installer to seal the air tightness layer to the window section by section. So you can peel off one strip to seal to the window frame, and you can peel off the second strip to seal back to the vapour control layer. Once this is completed continuously around the window frame, an airtight seal is guaranteed for the lifetime of the building. An alternative approach to airtightly sealing window connections is to pre-install a tape on the window frame. This has the advantage in that the installer has more flexibility on site when the windows are being fitted, when the tape is pre-fitted, then there's less likelihood of tape being exposed later on when the dry internal lining is being applied. This tape, Contiga SL for example, has a pre-applied tape which allows the window fitter to pre-fit the tape onto the window frame. Then once the window is placed in position, the tape on the opposite side can be removed and bonded back to the air tightness layer, giving a very neat, fast and reliable airtight connection. Locating leaks around windows or any area in the external envelope can prove difficult. Um, for experienced testers, it's relatively straightforward. People tend to use their hands, believe it or not, to locate leaks. You can feel the leak. But to visually show a leak, sometimes it's useful to have a fog emitting device. This particular device has been used on the project here to locate leaks around windows during the depressurization test. This emits a fog which allows leakages to be visually seen. So the wizard stick is a very useful tool on site for locating leaks. We've moved to a different location now. We're at out of the blue in Wicklow and we've come here because we want to talk a little bit about shading. Now we want to try and capture the winter sun to heat our houses but we don't want to overheat in the summertime with all this south facing glass. 
there's a very precise definition as to what constitutes overheating and that is that your building should not exceed 25 degrees Celsius for more than 10% of the year. And if you think about it, if you're outside on a beautiful day like we are today and the sun is very strong, what's a great way of keeping the sun off your face is a simple device like this, a baseball cap. And we can also put a baseball cap, if you like, on our passive houses and we can show you this here very, very well. Upstairs we've got a quite a deep roof overhang and if you look carefully at the shadow line created by this overhang, we can see that very little of the sun is getting into the building. The glass is mostly in shadow. That's upstairs. If you look downstairs, the balcony that I'm standing on now also creates quite a strong shadow on the south facing glass. So we have a very nice and predictable situation here with regards to shading. normal house uh, you only have a double glaze unit and you have a radiator underneath the window and it's it's worthwhile talking about that for a second and the reason for that is because the surface of the glass in a normal house is actually very low let's imagine it's 10 degrees uh, minus outside then the surface of the glass here could be as low as 8 or 9 degrees Celsius and that's going to feel chilly in the room that's why we need a radiator underneath the window in the passive house, however, because of the specification of this glass, even if it's minus 15 degrees Celsius outside, the surface temperature right of the glass will never go below about 17 and a half degrees Celsius. Okay? And because of that performance, which is achieved because of the incredible U value of the glass, we can do away without the radiator. So passive house windows are important, not only, only for energy conservation, but also in terms of comfort. With the first passive house that was built in Ireland in 2003, the windows had to be sourced outside of Ireland. But now it's great that there are a number of manufacturers starting to build windows to the passive house standard. And a good few of those are even going now towards passive house certification. So right now we can source the windows here in Ireland, which is great in terms of job security, sustainability and green collar employment.